Hey y'all, TRG here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the severe weather setup here for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and possibly even more days than that. Tornadoes will be possible, as well as an all-hazards threat, so let's dive right on into today's video. We're starting out with the GFS Supercell Composite here, and you'll notice we really don't have anything for about the next two, three days. Talked about that in my live stream, how we're going to be going from this very active to inactive pattern, and then back to active, and that's exactly what the GFS model does show here if we go all the way out to Tuesday day where we do have a marginal risk in effect, a very small marginal risk in effect up in this region here for Tuesday, March 12th, of course. Now, this is anticipated to stay marginal. Maybe we may have a threat for an isolated weak tornado on that day, but it doesn't look notable whatsoever, so we'll just monitor it, but I don't expect Tuesday to be all that big at all. Then we have Wednesday here. Wednesday could be an issue. Now, the Storm Prediction Center is yet to highlight an area for severe weather due to predictability issues, but we do have a broad area where tornado ingredients will be in place all the way from, get this, almost southern Iowa to southern Texas. Now, the key factor here is the instability because we have a lot of instability, but look at that cap. We've got 120 sin in some locations here. And that's going to be enough to stop storms from developing on Wednesday, but we'll most likely still see some severe weather on Wednesday. Then we could push on out to our main day, which is most likely going to end up being Thursday for this section of severe weather here. And again, look at the warm sector all the way from, look at this, southwestern New York to southern Texas. So that is where your tornado ingredients are present on this particular model run. We'll take a look at some ensemble members to see what our most likely outcome for ingredients will be here. But again, take a look at instability. Most of this is capped out, so that's going to be our number one issue here, at least on these model runs right now, is that capping. So that's going to be something that we really determine more of the day of, which is why right now they have that small 15% chance out, out in this area, which I say small, but it's really for uh, 10 million, almost 11 million people, so still quite a large 15% chance. And if we push this on out even further, I'll switch back to your Supercell Composite. They're also talking about highlighting an area for Friday. There's still some predictability issues, but the Deep South Delta definitely looks to be under the gun for severe weather yet again. Again, pretty much the same days, Thursday, Friday, and then we can even go into, if I go ahead and push it forward here, Saturday as well with some isolated severe weather in the deep south and nearly the same locations. This is looking like a multi-day severe weather setup uh, for pretty much all of the middle and later portion of next week. And we could put, push this out even further into Sunday in their severe weather. And uh, now, um, you know me, I don't really believe this as much because it does have severe weather in my location. But, you know, again, it, it, there's tornado ingredients in place, but that instability in this sense is fully uncapped. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, a lot of this is going to change. So just make sure you're taking all this with a grain of salt. But it, it is definitely something to monitor. If you are anywhere from northern Illinois into southwestern Texas, back up towards the coastal areas of the United States. So everybody in this entire region here needs to be monitoring the threat for severe weather all the way from Wednesday to Sunday, which is a very very long span of severe weather. Uh, but again, some of these days are going to end up being little to nothing. Other days may end up being uh, quite considerable. So we'll just continue to keep an eye on it. And even on Monday, we could have some severe weather in Florida as well. So yeah, that is going to be your uh, GFS model for your instability and your supercell composite. Now let's take a look at the jet stream. It's a bit tricky. So if you guys remember two setups ago, we had that very, very tricky setup uh, up there in Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio with that enhanced risk for severe weather due to that southern jet stream. It was extremely difficult to forecast, and that almost looks to be the exact same case here. So this is going to be uh, something that's probably going to end up shifting around a lot, but you can see the jet stream in place here for Thursday night, which is why we already have that 15% chance out for severe weather. And then we could go out even further here into Friday, and you'll see that jet stream continues to push eastward and then we get another trough that pulls on in here and then another trough so three troughs according to this specific model run here now again this will change so let's go ahead and take a look at your ensemble members this is the GEFS which is basically the GFS ensemble me member guidance here and still Thursday looks like a big day you can see this is the average again the mean supercell composite and it takes it all the way up there towards northern and central Illinois back down to south central Texas 
this on Thursday. And I do want to go back just a little bit here because we kind of skipped over Wednesday. So there's Wednesday. Again, ex pretty much the exact same regions, just slightly, slightly more to the west of southwestern Illinois there. Uh, but pretty much the exact same areas for Wednesday and Thursday under the gun for severe weather. Now, I'm sure Haley's watching this. Haley, uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on your location. You're on the northern edge of that supercell composite. So again, this stuff's going to change. And the main factor here is really going to be that ca that capping. And we won't be able to determine that until really the day of to see how much cloud cover we do have. And if we go and push this out even further, there's Thursday. And that's why we have that 15% chance for severe weather already out in this general location here. I'll show that, of course, in just a bit. And uh, again, that's because high ensemble member guidance here for both Thursday. And if we look into Friday as well, Friday, also high <laughs> ensemble member guidance here. And uh, it's, it's very rare to see orange on this so that's how you know for a fact we are definitely in tornado season and uh, again even saturday we've got high ensemble member guidance on uh, tornado ingredients in place now tornado ingredients doesn't necessarily mean that tornadoes will be possible because you know of course if you have a strong capping in place then nothing at all is going to fire and then your all hazards threat is gone but that's just something we'll have to determine later on down the line and then as you go into sunday you can see that gets back down to the green which is considered low on ensemble guidance there and uh yeah i do want to take a look at this now take this with a grain of salt but this is your maximum supercell composite and i imagine this is going to be pretty crazy for wednesday and thursday and uh yeah you can see a lot of orange and red there for wednesday and i imagine thursday is going to go yep right on into the pink for thursday with 13 14 supercell composite out there uh, so that's your maximum supercell composite possible and it shows multiple days of severe weather so We'll just continue to keep a very close eye on it. Uh, all we can do is watch and wait and keep a really, really close eye on it. I'll, of course, keep y'all updated here with the live stream tomorrow on Monday, March 11th, of course. And if I switch y'all on over here to, uh, I want to do soundings now. So this is going to be for uh, Friday. This is Friday severe weather threat. And uh, yeah, you can see here, I'm actually going to move my face cam just a little bit on over to the bottom right. So you guys can see it slightly better here. Uh, you guys can see that instability is at 4,000 instability no capping at all and you've got a crazy sounding here 73 over 80 now this was not cherry picked i just picked this out in the open warm sector here so this is i believe for uh, eastern texas if i'm not mistaken this is for eastern texas here you can see that photograph in place as well so really really good sounding there and i'll zoom out so y'all can see that actually i'll zoom in you can see that photograph there at the top right of your screen and then this is uh, again for actually this is a southwestern ohio for thursday so this is more uh, to the northeast of that warm sector and uh, you guys can't see but it's 1500 instability 59 over 69 and decent photograph so honestly very favorable environment on all three of these soundings so i just wanted to show those briefly because uh, that is definitely a concern uh, but there's not any uh, capping in place on all three of these soundings. There's actually zero capping in place, literally complete zero. So we'll just watch that very, very closely. Now I want to get on into the professionals, of course, because you guys know I wouldn't be talking about something unless the professionals are highlighting it. And then we could go all the way to Sunday, Monday, and then we'll go into Tuesday and Wednesday. You can see not a whole lot on Wednesday morning. Now, again, keep in mind, this is Wednesday morning. So this does not account for, you know, severe weather that may occur on Wednesday night. Now, Thursday morning, you can see we do have a, a pretty large area where uh, thunderstorms will be possible all up in this region here now that's going to change but it is from the weather prediction center and then we could go into friday it pushes more eastward saturday it goes a bit more to the south and then sunday it's off the coastline so we'll just have to keep a very close eye on this but uh yeah the weather prediction center you know we use this frequently but it's not uh, it, normally it's not as accurate as what the storm prediction center has because the weather prediction center is for where thunderstorms are possible rather than severe thunderstorms the storm prediction center is more for or where severe thunderstorms and thunderstorms, of course, are possible as well. So this is where we have a 15% chance for severe thunderstorms in this region, as opposed to this one, which was just a chance for general thunderstorms from the Weather Prediction Center for Thursday morning. So this, again, is for, uh, I believe this is for Thursday. Yeah, this is for Thursday. Really going to be focusing into most likely Thursday evening, Friday morning, more of an overnight threat for severe weather. Quite large 15% chance for severe weather in that location. So we'll keep a very, very close eye 
eye out on that. Dallas, of course, is inside that. Fort Worth, Waco, Lufkin, Shreveport. You guys are all under the gun for severe weather there. Now, this is going to change. This is going to change. It could expand considerably more to the northeast, more to the east, the south. So we'll just watch it closely. And then, like I said, for day four, it's predictability too low because they are not too sure exactly where that warm sector is going to set up and if that capping is going to be in place. So day four predictability, day five, we've got that 15%, day six predictability, seven predictability, and day eight predictability. Guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Stay safe and watch severe weather. Goodbye.